Hey guys, it's Miko from MO Sound Lab, and two days ago we released Miko, the next generation cabinet simulator, and today I installed the new firmware for my Helix 2.8. Let's enter God Mode! <laughs> Okay, so that's the new Revit generator uh, from the Helix firmware. Uh, going through the Miko uh, with default settings on both. So I didn't touch anything except for the routing. And this is actually one of the main questions that I've been getting with Miko, with people kind of uh, having problems running it standalone because it does require you to uh, do something with the settings. Uh, I'll go through what you need to do with Helix in this video. So um, everything is pretty much normal. Uh, this is just the AMP block, that's the rev generator, I didn't touch anything. And what you have to do is have your Helix connected to your computer with the USB cable and um, uh, have this export here as the USB 1 slash 2 and on the Miko this is the standalone version so um, it's cool that you don't actually have to use a DAW Cubase or Logic or anything like that you can run this as a standalone meaning that if you just have a Windows or a Mac computer this will work so uh, you need to go to the audio settings and just see what I did here so I'm using the ASIO uh, Helix device and uh, just the basic output 1 plus 2 and input 1 plus 2 and um, uh, the buffer size try and get it as low as possible so it's easier to play through if you have this super high you will get some latency and it's gonna be a little bit unnatural feeling to play uh, but I can get it to 10 milliseconds and this is okay uh, for playing through at least so now what we can do is uh, tweak the amp and change the mic up realistically at the same time and that's pretty awesome so let's just start going through what it sounds like and um, some of the things that I haven't really covered yet is that these nine cabinets are some of my favorite cabinets that I've ever had and um, to those people who have been asking for more cabinets maybe you don't realize how insane this collection is already for example the Mega 4x12 old is based on the traditional Mesa Boogie 4x12 cabinet aka John Petrucci guitar cabinet. So, if we have a 57 and we find a really good position for the 57, um, for example, let's see, for example, here. So, even though we're playing the Rev. With this cabinet, it's pretty easy to get some Petrucci esque sound. So. We're still just playing around with one microphone and I haven't touched the amp settings on the Helix. So um, let's just try and keep this so that I don't even touch the settings on the Rev and uh, what I can do with the Miko. So um, one of my favorite cabinets however is the Mars GB and this is probably one of the best sounds that you can get out of Miko. So. Uh, 
I mean, that's insane once again. And um, instead of kind of using Drebble for getting more brightness, what you can now do is place the microphone more to the cap. So instead of using the Drebble knob, Why not do that? And that sounds, in my opinion, better than having the treble way up on the amplifier. So another cool trick for adding treble instead of uh, using the treble knob on the amplifier or placing the microphone to the middle is to use the impedance control. So for example, let's put this microphone more uh, to the edge so it's darker. Sounds pretty awesome, but still. Um, let's use the American impedance and look at the spectrum here. You can realistically add some high tube amp resonance with this knob and at 100% it's realistic. But you can also take it further so... And you may also want to compensate by adding some low resonance. So if you look at that graph, it's kind of cool to balance the low and high end to be approximately at the same level. So if I do something like this, uh, you see that I have less of the low resonance and more of the high resonance but they balance each other out perfectly with this specific microphone position so what you get is a very balanced guitar sound <laughs> I personally like to keep things pretty natural, so I'll usually have the impedance off. But uh, for those people that were also requesting for like an EQ section of a kind, this kind of is doing that. And you can use this very realistically uh, to boost the highs and lows. And if you want to have the mids in, don't use it. And that's gonna have the natural mids in. And remember that at any point what kind of impedance settings you end up using or whatever, you can always export the IR and add an IR block here in the helix and you can use that sound, that exact sound, uh, anywhere without the Miko. So that's kind of the cool part with Miko is that you can kind of use it to create these tones and then save it and use it with your helix no matter where you go. Okay, so let's try and come up with something cool and I'll kind of show you a really nice technique for creating sort of a unique mix uh, that applies to many good things. So this is gonna be kind of a cool visual trick that you can do uh, to kind of... Uh, well, let's, let me show you what it's all about. So it, it takes two microphones. Um, I'll just still use the rev here and just add another microphone and maybe I'll choose that I want the first mic to be on uh, on the Mars Chibi and the second one I want to be on the old Mega that one and um, I can even choose the mics beforehand so let's just choose uh, a 160 and a 57 on the Chibi and this is a good idea to have different types of microphones so you get kind of a different tonal character in. But what I really want to do is have one of these microphones be uh, face flipped. And this is something that I haven't really covered yet, but with the face knob you can actually flip this 180 degrees, meaning that it's face cancelling. 
So now, when you play through this, it'll sound horrible, which is not what you want. But the idea here is that you find these two mic positions that, when face reversed, sound the most horrible that you can imagine. So pay attention to not getting any note definition and only getting kind of the sizzly part or clunky sound with no notes in it, just the nasty stuff. So. That's pretty nasty already. So that's kind of a really quick way of doing this, but you can obviously uh, experiment more with this. What I have going on is uh, one, of, one of them is a dark mic and one of them is a bright mic now. Uh, these positions I would have never chosen because they even on their own they don't really work that well. But now if I flip the face something magical should happen. And these should sound really good together. So. And that's the opposite of what we had when it was face flipped. So now we don't have any of those nasty characters in, we only have the note definition. So. And it's a really cool mix, a unique mix, and uh, let me demonstrate this the other way around. Let's have one of the other microphones in the middle and be that bright microphone. And um, let's see what it sounds like with the face flipped once again. Sounds too good, so it needs to be a nastier sound. Okay, so now it sounds as terrible as I can get it this quickly, and now when I flip the face... You're gonna have a lot of fun with this. See you later guys and please go check out Miko. You can get it for free to try out and then get the full license. <laughs> I've been Miko. See you later. Bye.